Matrix Concept Holdings Berhad was founded by Datuk Lee Tian Hock in 1996. The company is in the property development industry where they act as an investment holding company while their subsidiary companies are mainly involved in property development, construction, education, hospitality and healthcare. The only country they sell to is Malaysia. For more information, you can visit their website at www.mchb.com.my. A bumpy but growing revenue and gross profit. Notice their gross profit wasn't growing in parallel with revenue starting in financial year 2017 as opposed to financial year 2011 to 16. That's because they had shifted their focus to sell more residential properties, while their sales for industrial properties has shrinked substantially. You can also see the difference in growth in their operating profit, where it increased 27% from financial year 2017 to 20, while their previous years grew more than 200%. The slowdown in profit growth had resulted their margins to taper off after financial year 2016 as they sold more affordable houses instead of industrial development properties. A sharp drop in ROIC due to the rising working capital and fixed assets, which had offset the returns generated over the years. One thing I like about Matrix is their management is a deliverer, not to mention they are pretty conservative with their remuneration, with net profit rising smoothly over the years. Matrix was initially a net cash company but later turned net debt in line with their active business expansion to build more new development properties. Not so exciting operating cash flow overall, as their operating cash flow has been relatively unstable over the years. Nonetheless, it makes sense for Matrix to spend a lot on capex as you need more land to build properties. Negative operating cash flow incurred in financial year 2016 with the rise in working capital. I suspect the rise in working capital is because of their diversification in business into education and leisure and recreation. They paid dividends for 8 years. Sadly, the paid out had reduced over the years. Their high capex and low operating cash flow had resulted their company to incur negative free cash flow during financial year 2013 to 16 and financial year 2020. Matrix is able to pay out dividends during those financial years is because they have high cash reserve. All in all, I rate their company 4.8 out of 8, which is about 60%. Not too shabby financial performance, though I don't like their unstable operating cash flow. After analyzing Matrix 10 years of financial data, here are my thoughts. Number 1. Their change in business strategy to focus on selling more residential properties and diversification towards other industries like education as well as leisure and hospitality had resulted their profit margins to decline after financial year 2017. Not sure what had motivated Matrix to sell more residential properties and less industrial, but if I were to guess, maybe it's linked to our local government's requirement for private developers to build more affordable residential properties. Aside from that, I feel that there's a limited growth potential for Matrix as their growth is kept within Malaysia. Not to mention, there's an intense competition in the property development market due to the scarcity of residential land for affordable properties. As the government aims to supply the citizens with more affordable housing, it will definitely affect their profit margins in the future. That's all for today's video. If you enjoyed the analysis, make sure you smash the like and subscribe button. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. I'll be happy to get back to you. With that, I'll see you in the next one.